Hi folks, Tony Zink here. Today I'm going to show you how to create an enterprise project type in your project online or project server environment. Regardless of whether you're using Microsoft's project online cloud service or their project server on-premise application, the techniques that I'm going to show you here today can be used in either case. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I've got a really useful tool that I use for my clients project online and project server implementations that I'd like to share with you. So having said that, let's get started. So here we are in my project online environment where I'm going to be working today. Before we create a new enterprise project type, let's take a look in the project center. I'll click the projects link over here in the quick launch navigation menu and up here on the in the upper left hand corner I'm going to click the projects tab to activate the ribbon toolbar. Under the new button I see that there is only currently one option as far as new projects to create in the system, a basic project. The, the system came built in with a SharePoint tasks list enterprise project type which I deleted and it came with also with an enterprise project uh, project type that I renamed to what you see here basic project. I'm going to add a new enterprise project type to this list because my, uh, my customer has told me that uh, they have a few different types of enterprise projects that they want to be able to create and manage in the system, one of them being a small infrastructure project. So in order to make that available from the new uh, drop down list, let's go and click the gear button in the upper left hand corner and select PWA settings to take us into the PWA settings area. Down in the lower left hand corner under the workflow and project detail pages heading, that's where I'll find the enterprise project types. If I click on that link, that'll take me to the page where I can see and manage the enterprise project types that are currently configured in the system. And there's that one basic project, uh, project type listed. I'm going to create a new one and I'll do that by clicking the new enterprise project type button in the upper left hand corner of the grid. That'll take me to a page that uh, will allow me to select all the different configuration options for this new enterprise project type, starting with the name. So I'm going to put in there small infrastructure for the name of this enterprise project type and then for the description I'll put in here small scale infrastructure boy if I could type today that would be great deployment or update moving down the page here Every one of these small infrastructure projects will be automatically assigned a project ID. And that, um, that, that project ID is defined by the numbering scheme that we, that we set up here. Every project ID number can have a prefix and it can have a, a postfix or a suffix. And then we can define here what's, this, what's the first number that it's going to use when it starts automatically generating these project ID numbers. So as I've said before, I like to follow a naming convention here for the prefix that matches the, the, the name of the project type. And so I'm going to put a prefix on every one of these project ID numbers, SI, which is short for small infrastructure, and then a dash. And then the numbering, I'm going to start with 1001. I don't think we're going to have more than uh, you know, 10,000 of, 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 of these small infrastructure projects in the system at any, at any given point in time. So that's what we're going to start with, our, our numbering scheme, a four-digit numbering scheme. And so when, we, when people start creating small infrastructure projects in the system, they'll be automatically assigned ID numbers like SI-1001, SI-1002, and so forth. I'm not going to put a, a postfix or a suffix on there, so I'm going to just keep on moving down the page here. This is not; these aren't going to be SharePoint tasks list projects, which I explained in one of my other videos. And I'm going to come back to the project detail pages in a later video. But since we I haven't created any custom um, project detail pages yet, I'm just going to select from the list of the, the the project detail pages or PDPs that come built into the system. And so I'll, I'll go with the project details PDP and the schedule PDP. And for the new project page, I'll go with the project information. These are just built-in PDPs. I'll come back and change these later, like I said, in a future video. 
This is not going to be the default enterprise project type, so I'm not going to check that box. I already have a default APT in the system, one called basic project. We're not going to associate this with any departments for now. And moving on down the page here, where do I want this to appear in any list of enterprise project types, like under the new button in the project center? I'm not going to position it at the end of that list. I'm going to place it before the, the only other one that's out there right now, basic project. So when people pull open that drop down list, they'll see the name small infrastructure, and then they'll see one called basic project. In the site creation section of the page here, I have three options. Basically what I'm controlling here is whether or not uh, SharePoint project sites are going to be created automatically or manually or not at all for this type of project in the system. We're going to promote that people use these project sites and so we want them to be automatically created and every t the first time this type of a project is published in a system. So when somebody creates a new small infrastructure project and the first time they publish it in the system they'll automatically be provisioned a project site where team members can go and they can collaborate on project related documents, issues, risks, and so forth. Down here in the synchronization section, we've got two options that I'm going to turn on. The first one is sync user permissions. So whenever somebody is added to the project team for one of these projects, they'll be automatically synchronized or granted access to the project site that's been created for that project. And then sync, use, uh, sync SharePoint tasks lists, basically what that does for you is any of the tasks that are in the project schedule that you've created for that project, those tasks will automatically be synchronized or, or they'll be auto-populated into a, a tasks list in that project's associated SharePoint uh, team site. So those are two settings that I always like to turn on if, if we're going to use project sites in the system. And then I'm going to leave everything else here default. We don't have any uh, uh, custom site templates created in our system yet, so we'll leave it set as the default project site uh, template. And we don't have any project plan or project schedule templates created yet uh, and uploaded into the system, and so I'm going to leave that set to none. Again, uh, I'm going to come back later uh, when, uh, when we create some custom uh, project detail pages, when we create some custom project site templates and project schedule templates, and we'll update these settings. But for now, we're good. But you know, stay tuned for that in the future. So I'm all done for now. I'm going to click a Save button here. There's one in the lower right-hand corner, and there's one in the upper right-hand corner of the page. Either one works. So clicking that will save this new enterprise project type in the system and it'll take me back to the enterprise project types page where I just was a few minutes ago. And so now I see in addition to the basic project, you know, enterprise project type that's, that's, uh, that was already in the system, I now have my small infrastructure uh, enterprise project type or EPT listed. And just to verify that it is working, We'll go back to the Project Center by clicking the Projects link over here in the left-hand Quick Launch Navigation menu. We'll click the Projects tab in the upper left-hand corner here on the Project Center page, and I'll click the New button, and I will see now two enterprise project types that are available for creation, Basic Project and my new Small Infrastructure Project Type. I'm going to come back later and create more enterprise project types, but for now, we're all set. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you've got any questions on this topic, please feel free to ask them down in the comments section. Now to help make your job of configuring and administering a little bit easier, I'd like to share with you a tool that I use for designing and documenting Project Online and Project Server implementations, my Configuration Blueprint template. I've been using and fine-tuning this template for over 15 years, and now you can use it to design and capture every single application configuration setting for your Project Online or Project Server implementation. And although I don't think anybody actually enjoys doing documentation, I know I don't, if you've got to do it, then at least this tool can make it a lot easier for you. So if you'd like to download my Configuration Blueprint template for free, then visit my site at tonyzink.com forward slash blueprint and grab it today. Thanks again, and good luck.